will put you in the driver's seat. The revolution will not be televised, not be televised, and be no rerun, brothers and sisters. The revolution will be live. Adversary at a young age, being a product of one's environment to corrupt anybody's mind. Or in this case, programming. We could say that robots cannot feel or experience real chemical emotion like people or dogs. But for laughs, let's just say we do exist in a universe that has sentient robots that behave and create society that mirrors our own like we do have on Earth. Where this takes place is a far off galaxy and a far off planet. Cybertron is where the story begins. Remember when I said that it would be funny that Cybertronians behave and have social structures like humans do? Well, if you know anything about India's caste system, which is literally extreme class segregation and discrimination, you'll understand why Megatron is the way he is. While D-16, also known as Megatron, has always been described as an idealist, a pacifist, an intellectual, a poet, and a common low-class worker, an energon miner to be exact. And the exact reason why he went to the mine was because he looked at Cybertron's host star briefly. And the higher-ups clearly did not appreciate that. Because, you know, the whole oppression thing, you know. That type of lifestyle. Plus his set of skills that he was, you know, manufactured to do, set him to be destined to be a miner, according to the eyes of his government. However, he vowed that he would see it again, its beauty, but the way that he wanted it. But like humans, Cybertronians need an escape from a life less desirable for Megatron and others like him in his class. That resulted in becoming a gladiator in his free time, as the Greek word Megas would mean great or grand Megatron or Megatronius after the prime that he idolized because he would not truly have a name before he would be nameless, would become a legendary gladiator on Cybertron as he would slay those just like him. He would realize that the current life that Cybertron gave him would not be the one that he wished for. And his violent tendencies are a bit funny, because he would often write poetry about anti-aggression and change in society. Or he would, until he entered a bar fight with the upper class Cybertronians, that would result in him tossing out his work and changing his outlook on his life entirely. All in one night. But obviously, the crowd cheered and filled his ego and passion for revolution a bit more and swayed him down a path of hostility over pacifism. Megatron was now on a mission for equality and bringing down the rigid caste system on Cybertron, a literal political figure for the people that he stood for. And remember when I said Megatron was a poet? Well apparently his good writing skills and his ways with words to inspire and bring distrust to the current regime. Megatron and his following that he'd be gaining we began to realize that essentially they were living in a sort of apartheid that was happening all around them in their everyday life. He had truly gone down the path of Malcolm X, starting as a lowly criminal and then turned into a civil rights activist for his people. In his ventures, he would meet a young Orion Pax, the officer that cleared his name after the innocence of the bar fight, or what he will be known as Commander Optimus Prime. Yes, Megatron and Optimus Prime would play for the same team, and for a similar cause. Optimus would even see him as a mentor, and would be considered his best friend, a brother even. However, little that they both would know that they did want the best for their people, but Megatron's version of peace and equality was through violence and radical ideals. Because him and his gladiator wisdom and way of thinking, that was all he knew. With that being told to the Council of Primes and Optimus giving a more reasonable and level-headed approach to equality, you could say that Optimus Prime is the Martin Luther King counterpart to Megatron's 
Malcolm X. Obviously, they sided with his rationale and wanted the then named Orion Pax to be the prime instead of Megatron, thus shoving Megatron's ego to the floor. With this, Megatron ended his close bond with the now Optimus Prime and forming a cult called the Decepticons, the name coming from you are being deceived because of how the Senate on Cybertron treated its people now banded with other like-minded radicals that were angry, poor, and needed a relatable leader that they could stand by. Now, let's allude this back to a sort of warmongering Malcolm X, because let's be honest, the two are very similar, in which they would proceed violence if need be, however, his execution would not line up with their intentions. In other words, you cannot use hate to snuff out hate and expect the result to bring the world that you are wanting. Because they can both agree upon, if you don't stand for nothing, you will fall for anything. This could not be wiser words for this type of leader than a former nameless gladiator that has risen from fame because of his oppressive socioeconomic system that he was born into. An egomaniac leader, a king in which he needs his subjects to feed his fragile ego and quick to anger. The only thing that Megatron knew was violence. A tyrant is what he would become instead of the leader that his people needed. And when he was in trouble, his followers would come to his rescue, but not the other way around, of course. If he was crossed, he would murder mercilessly politicians, adversaries, civilians, and even comrades, instead of finding a better way that does not result in violence. But how can someone do such a thing if that's all that they know? The Decepticon's leadership was as much as a threat to themselves as the Autobots. Because treachery was commonplace, impotent was rampant, and a sense of independence was nowhere to be found. All sorts of acts of terrorism, the selfish impatience and hatred would ultimately lead to the fall of Cybertron. Megatron always aspired to be a medic, but he even mentions himself, I don't think I'd be a good medic. No patience. Megatron would become truly what is worse than what he tried to prevent or even fix. Someone who rules with an iron fist under his own hierarchical rule. Instead of proceeding more democratically, Megatron did it the way that he wanted to. Megatron did it his own way, but not the way of his people, his fellow Cybertronians. Even if he ended up winning the war, the tyrant Megatron would not even have a kingdom to rule over. Just scraps of energon powered entities that would lie before him that were the people that he just tried to help, convoluted by his own ideals. These people who were just like him dragged in a way of life that they did not expect or even want to partake in, making those born under the civil war that he helped create, fed into a system that he was similarly born into, a never ending factory of hatred, death, uncertainty, and despair. Nevertheless, he truly did have good intentions. Shockwave, a Senate member on the fence with Megatron's ideals, of course. His mind reading powers proved so, but the execution led to the worst possible outcome. Synonymous to Adolf Hitler, Megatron was an artist who was disgusted with the state of his people and how the government dealt with it. Megatron's revolution would not be televised because it would be on display for everyone to watch. 